Hello and welcome. My name is James from the DSO Imager channel and today I'm going to show you my workflow for processing the Lagoon Nebula. I shot the Lagoon with my 115 millimeter refractor, the uh, Astronomics AT115 EDT, and I used my ZWO 1600 mono camera. For the uh, filters, I use an Astronomics Luminance 2 filter uh, and also ZWO RGB filters. Total exposure uh, or integration time uh, was 11 hours. So out of that 11 hours, about 5 hours of luminance and then uh, close to 2 hours per uh, color channel. All right, so let me show you what we have here. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the color data here. So this is red, and there's our green, and our blue. Now, prior to combining these, I did a linear fit. I used blue as a reference and applied the linear fit to the green and the red and this is what the combination look like. Now if you're uh, familiar with working with uh, monochrome data usually one channel is stronger than the other so when you put them together and you do your initial uh, uh, stretch with the uh, screen, screen transfer function tool just to see what you get if you lock the channels it'll be overwhelmingly green or red or whichever channel is the strongest and usually the way around that is you unlock the channels and so this applies a stretch individually to each of the color and that gives you a chance to see what you have but by doing the linear fit I can lock these channels now and there so this is with these channels locked so I mean from a color calibration part it's already uh, pretty close. So then after that I ran dynamic background extraction just to give you an idea of where my reference points are. You can see them here. Basically I put them, I know it's hard to see, I put them all in these darker areas. And the result of dynamic background extraction is this. All right, so let's uh, step through some of the work that I did on the color. So some some changes here. Basically, what you're seeing here is even though I did the linear fit, I still ran um, color correction. And the color correction option that I chose for this was uh, using photometric color calibration. So that is color calibration right there. And yeah, I just imported the uh, uh, target information and it ran and did a pretty good job. All right, and after that, I went ahead and stretched it, so here's our stretch. Uh, for stretching, I just use uh, Easy Processing Suite Soft Stretch. And then I remove the stars. Tweak the color a tiny bit and left it at this. All right, so next I had to uh, do some work on the luminance. And here's our five hours of luminance data. Now, to be honest, I wasn't too crazy about how this came out. I really wanted to get more data, and the uh, the weather that we've been having just hasn't been cooperating enough. I, I actually started pulling data on this uh, a couple of months ago. I would I would uh, the targets I was working at the time, if they were getting close to setting around four o'clock in the morning or whatever, I had it set to swing over and catch Lagoon as it was rising for an hour or two in those early morning hours. And so that's how I managed to accumulate this five hours and the chance to build on this just wasn't there. Now I did have the six hours from uh, the RGB data so I actually extracted the illuminance 
from that RGB data. Um, you can go back there. Basically, I'll, I'll do it from this here. It's, uh, it's this button right here. Extract C-I-E-L. So you pull that. That basically gives you uh, illuminance. There's other uh, fee, uh, use, uses for this. This is a nice way of uh, making a mask. But anyway, so I took the six hours from the RGB data and this five hours of luminance data, and I stacked that together using Deep Sky Stacker, and that gave me, let me back it up here, a, basically a, a master luminance channel. And so this is what I did uh, the deconvolution against, All right? And so if I zoom in, this is before deconvolution, and that's after deconvolution. Now, I still felt the stars were a little bit bloated in this luminance. And uh, so what I decided to do was uh, really pretty simple. Uh, when I added this to the, um, uh, to the RGB data, I removed the stars. And then I just put the RGB-only stars back in the image. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, even got some nice detail in here. All right, so it was time to um, stretch this and then apply this luminance to the color. And this is what I got. So all I did was I opened up the LRGB combination tool and here you can see it's already in there. So these are left unchecked. This is the color image. And then I just dropped it on there and it put the luminance. And this is the result. So now I'll step through all the different phases. So you can see I took out the stars. I put a mask on there. And the idea here was to try to brighten this area because this part was really dark. I didn't want this to be as dark as it was. And so here, you see, brightening it up, removing green, just a lot of curves work. Now on this one here, what I'm wanting to do is take the color out of these darker areas. And so I make another mask, and I'm going to pull back on saturation. I can move, remove the mask or clear it. And so you can see the change that that's having. Now the mask uh, should be reversed, yep. I made a, combined two different masks so that I could work on this outer area without this inner area, right? Because this inner area is super bright. So any kind of effort to pull out details here, brighten this area, would just overexpose the core. So it's, it's kind of like uh, the Orion Nebula, trying to work that balance of bringing out the dimmer areas without blowing out the core. And now I'm working on the core. So even though I had this protected and I'm br making this area brighter, once I start working on the core, the first thing I th do is uh, actually pull back on curves. Uh, there's a lot of detail in here, but it's so bright it's being concealed. So we're just pulling it back. All right, so uh, next was to work on the stars. So I went back to just the, um, the uh, RGB stars. Now, I did do some experimentation. Uh, this is where I ended up with this. Um, I wanted to see if I could uh, cook the data here in the center a little bit more uh, by using uh, this guy right here, HDR Multiscale Transform. And uh, that's what we have here. So, now this one doesn't look too different, uh, but this one, yeah. So, it really... <laughs> kind of overcooked. I mean, leaning, uh, zooming out a little bit, it actually does look pretty good. Uh, I like what it was doing here, but it starts to, I think, fall apart a little bit as you zoom in. 
and when I added the stars back in, the stars in the center here were real pixely. So I think it was pushing the data too much. Now this is non-drizzled. And so my thought is maybe one day, I'm, I'm not going to do it now, but maybe one day if, if it's cloudy, I might go back and reprocess this, uh, but drizzle the data and see if that gives me the resolution to handle uh, cooking it a little bit more. Uh, but I ended up uh, sticking with this here. And so I added the stars and I think we have different variations of the stars in here. And um, yeah, these are so yeah, you can see this is the kind of see the stars, they didn't quite hold up too well. I mean, yeah, we're pixel peep peeping now, but yeah, I think it, I think it, I think drizzling the data might help this. So I believe I ultimately ended up with this. And then I did my usual, which is run it through Photoshop and ended up with this. So in Photoshop, what I do is I tweak contrast, I tweak brightness, I give it a little bit extra tweak on, um, on, um, saturation and hue and uh, this is what I ended up with. And so overall I'm, I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, I think this uh, it's definitely my best lagoon I've ever taken and I'm really happy how this came out in the broadband colors. Uh, I think the last couple times I shot this I did it in narrow band. Now I'm in a uh, Bortle 5. Uh, there is a pretty bad light pollution uh, basically the town center uh, kind of to my southeast and so I, I waited until this target got at least 30 degrees up and then I only took uh, pictures with um, like a 30 percent or less moon so a lot of this data was collected uh, without any kind of moon up and uh, I do think that helped a lot so uh, if you like the result uh, please give this video a thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed uh, I certainly would appreciate a subscription um, and definitely check out some of the other stuff uh, on my channel. Um, other than that, uh, clear skies and a good evening.